Here, we find ourselves in the basement of the freshman dorm at Sketchy U, where each Sunday night the top-secret underground boxing club meets. But we're not really here to talk about boxing club. That would actually be against the rules. We're here to talk about the reactions of carboxylic acids. In fact, these students kindly rigged up a ring from cardboard boxes as a reminder of that. The first thing you need to know about carboxylic acids is, you guessed it, they're acidic. This means that any time they react with anything remotely basic, like, say, this base right here, the carboxylic acid will be deprotonated to form a carboxylate anion. Notice how this amateur just lost his proton hat and his dignity. Pretty much any base will do, but ammonia, alkoxides, and hydroxide, which the base's sticker should remind you of, are the most important ones to recognize. Carboxylate anions that have long alkyl chains spontaneously assemble into micelles. In fact, these micelles give soap its power to dissolve grease, which this bar of boxing club soap should help you remember though it is an ironic choice of swag for this grimy place. Now, aside from being deprotonated, carboxylic acids are commonly converted into a handful of other molecules. We're going to take a closer look at those reactions by checking out the contenders waiting to face off with our sorry lad in the ring. The first reaction we'll look at turns carboxylic acids into esters. This reaction is called the Fischer esterification, See this contender getting ready by chowing down on a fish dinner and reminding you of her name with that Esther tattoo? Now that's how you do self-promotion. The Fischer esterification requires the original carboxylic acid plus two other things. You need alcohol, like this cold bottle of Coe's beer, and you need an acid catalyst, represented by this acidic lemon garnish. Now, Let's take a look at exactly how a Fischer esterification reaction happens. First, the acid protonates the carbonyl oxygen in the carboxylic acid. Then, the carbonyl's double bond breaks, and a tetrahedral intermediate forms, which is similar in shape to this microphone on a broken stand. Perhaps self-promoting Esther is going to use this mic to sing her own praises. How esterific! The next reaction we'll look at turns carboxylic acids into amides. You can remember that by this boxer, reading the metaphysical treatise Ami. Seems like he'll be relying on psychological warfare. Though he's not just brains, he came prepared with some amino protein powder in case his fight turns physical, which is also a reminder that an amine must be added for this reaction to work. Even so, Pretty harsh conditions are needed to prepare amides. That's because the amine reagent will first deprotonate the carboxylic acid, making it less reactive. One way to overcome this is to add heat, just like the high temperature that's making our philosophical boxer sweat. As an alternative to heat, a special activating reagent called DCC can be added, which we've symbolized with the debate club chair tank top this boxer is sporting so proudly. Let's hope he doesn't lose any of those precious brain cells in the ring. Carboxylic acids can also be turned into dimer molecules, called anhydrides. This happens when two carboxylic acids are joined together, symbolized by these two guys sparring to warm up. And on the topic of warming up, this reaction requires a fair bit of heat, like the sweaty heat these brothers are generating. A molecule of water is lost in this process, making it formally a dehydration reaction, which I think the twins can relate to with all the water they've lost in battle. Speaking of heat, there's one last reaction of carboxylic acids that you need to know. Decarboxylation. In decarboxylation, a molecule loses one carbon and two oxygens from the carboxylic acid group as a single molecule of CO2. Sort of like how this box being destroyed, or de-cardboard boxed, as it burns in that fire, which is literally spewing out carbon dioxide smoke. But this reaction can only happen to carboxylic acids with a specific structure. There actually needs to be another carbonyl group on the carbon two carbons down from the carboxylic acid carbon. That two doors down position is called the beta position. 
An example of a carboxylic acid with a beta carbonyl group is shown on the logo on the burning box. The carboxylic acid group will be lost altogether as CO2 if enough heat is added to a beta carbonyl carboxylic acid. All right, the dorm fire alarm should be going off any minute now. And for once, not because some freshman left a strawberry toaster puff in for too long. How do I know it was strawberry, you might ask? Well, I don't. It was supposed to be, but it certainly didn't taste like it when I got back. All right, anyways, uh, let's recap and get out of here. The simplest reaction carboxylic acids undergo is deprotonation into a carboxylate anion, which can be caused by pretty much any base. Carboxylic acids can also be converted into esters by the Fischer esterification reaction, which occurs through a tetrahedral intermediate. In order to get this reaction going, it requires an alcohol and an acid. Carboxylic acids can also be turned into amides if an amine and either heat or the reagent DCC is added, or by adding lots of heat and doing a dehydration reaction, carboxylic acids can be converted into dimeric molecules called anhydrides. And finally, carboxylic acids with another carbonyl at the beta position can lose carbon dioxide in a decarboxylation reaction, provided that enough heat is added. All right, it's time to get out of this smoky basement and clean up, and maybe put some of that carboxylate soap to good use. <laughs>